How do you set yourself apart from other people in your area? Well, when I had a client friend reach out to me and ask me to build him a t-shirt website for his business, I thought, you know what? Let's actually let people who come to your site play around with shirt colors directly on your site. So I built him this little widget here that they can come in here and just click and change around the shirt size. In his case, it has his logo on top of it and it allows them just to kind of get the sense that, hey, we want you to actually get what you want and you can kind of play around with it and have some fun on the side. And this is the little project we're going to build out today using just HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. All right, let's jump right in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Now on the surface, this is just a video about creating this t-shirt picker, but really it gives you access to a bunch of really important concepts in CSS. And I'm gonna encourage you actually to pause the video in just a moment, try it yourself and then play it and see what I did. You can see here, first of all though, I wanna get you access to what you need. So I'm gonna add a link in the description to this Pixel Bay uh, t-shirt. If you have an account, you can download this as an SVG and that's exactly what I've got in the project. I haven't altered it at all, except for changing the color to current color. And that's your only hint. All right, and then I'm gonna pass along the hero patterns. Uh, I use one of these hero patterns down this way. Let's see, this one right here, this wiggle one, you can use that as well. And then finally, the font I used is enter and you can use that if you'd like to. All right, so with that out of the way, go ahead and pause the video, see it if you can do it yourself and then play and jump right back in with me. All right, hopefully you had a good go of that. I'm gonna open the sidebar here and add a new file. Let's just do index.html and uh, let's go ahead and just do some boilerplate with Emmett here. And we'll call this like t-shirt picker or something like that. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and drag in the SVG to my sidebar. All right, just like that. Now, uh, I'm actually going to just copy this SVG tag itself. And we actually need to add this directly into the HTML to be able to manipulate it with its current color. So I'm going to copy this out and close that down. And then let's move this over this way. All right, so closing everything down, let's go ahead and get this set up the way we need to. I'm going to add all of this in a container class. And then inside here, I'll have a banner and that's where the actual t-shirt will go itself. That'll be kind of centered to the middle of the screen. All right, next, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in that SVG code, and we'll change just a couple things here. So if I come back up to the very top, we're gonna to see that there are two colors in here, and originally the shirt is like a bright yellow color, and so what I'm gonna do is replace both of these with current color. Now, current color has been around forever in CSS, and it allows you to essentially use the text color to change a fill or a stroke or some other property. And uh, you can do that very easily with SVGs as long as they're in line like this in the HTML. So I'm going to close that down because we don't want to see that constantly. And then we're going to add our text and we'll call that it. Well, let's have one div. We'll give it a class of content as a sibling to this SVG. It'll, it'll hold all the text we need. And inside here, we'll have a text container. And this will have two things. It'll have an H2 that says, customize your heart out. You can see that over there on the right. And then secondly, we'll have a paragraph and I'll just paste this in. All right, there we go. We got both those set and ready. Next to the text container, we'll have one called a button container. And this one will have four buttons. And what we're gonna do is, let me just go ahead and do one and then we'll paste it down and, and duplicate this. We're gonna have a data attribute here, a custom data attribute just called data color. And I'm gonna give this the hue value that I want the button to have and eventually the t-shirt to have. Then I'll copy this down a few times. Let's change these out to just some colors that are kind of across the spectrum to 60 and then we'll go 320. All right, so that's all the HTML we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and click this live server to give, get everything up and running here. All right, there we go. That looks nice <laughs> and ugly. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and just do all this inline. There's no point in creating separate files for something that's not gonna be that much. So let's just add a style tag directly down here. And then let me just paste in a couple styles here. This is just to do a basic reset here, clearing all the margin and padding and setting everything to box sizing of border box. Next, we're gonna have a root and this will hold our hue value. In this case, we're gonna have it at 220, which is like a bluish color to start with. Everything will be based off of that hue, including the accent, the background and the text color. And eventually the shirt color will actually manipulate all of this as well. All right, next, let's get the font set up. So I've got this enter font right here. And uh, I think what I want is the 400. And then let's scroll down a little bit, give ourselves more room so we can see what we're doing and grab the 700 as well. So I'm gonna grab all of this and we'll add this to the top of the document, maybe just below uh, the title. And then let's grab this font family and we'll add that in our CSS. So move this over, let's see where is it right here, okay. And uh, then let's come back down to the CSS and we'll say body and we'll say font families enter. All right, there we go. 
Okay, next, uh, I want this entire body to be a display of grid. We're going to place the items to the center, and that will keep everything in the very center of the screen as long as I have min height of 100 view height. Next, I'm going to set my font size here to like 2. Point, uh, let's do 2.8 rem, something like that. That's a little too big. How about just 2 rem? Then I'll do a line height of 1.5. Next, let's set the background color. And here I'm just going to want to set this to my variable of background. And then finally, let's do color here. And I want all my color to, by default, take on this text color. All right, and you can see that because I set this to current color, this SVG is now going to take on this blue hue color that I already have in my text. Okay, so that's set. Let's go ahead and move down kind of the, the order in the DOM tree to the container. We'll say display grid and place items uh, center to keep everything in the center of this section as well. The difference here is that I want to make sure that the width is set to 100%. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to have a background image and we're going to grab that from our hero icons. So if I come back over this way and I click on my hero icons, where was that? Lost it again. All right, here we go. I'm just going to actually copy this directly. Let's see. Yeah, let's just copy this directly as is. Maybe reduce the opacity some, something like that. I don't mind if it's that color. And I'll just copy that section. I don't need to copy, copy the background color because I'm not going to have a color. I'll let the body itself be the color. We'll just paste that directly in there, and uh, that should work. All right, let's come back over here. You can see now I've got that showing. And if I were to eventually get this thing smaller, you'd see that uh, the T-shirt, that there'll be uh, white above and below it, or that background color above and below it. All right, next we're going to have the banner itself, again, moving kind of down the DOM tree. This will be display a flex with flex wrap of wrap. And we'll have a gap of 20 pixels. And let's align the items to the center. And we'll also justify the content to the center. So this keeps everything in the center of the banner itself. Let's set a max width here of like, I don't know, 1200 pixels. And we'll say that it needs to be as large as it can be. And let's set some padding up top to six rem and then two rem on the sides. All right, so if I do that and I pull all the way out, it should eventually you get some white space up and down. Now, because we haven't yet set the size of this right here, it's not really wrapping, or it's only wrapping. It's not actually snapping up next to each other, but we'll fix that in a second. All right, the next thing we've got is the content. All right, that's everything besides the T-shirt. And here we want this to have a max width. We're going to do 32 characters, so it kind of sets out how large that can be side to side. We'll do display of grid, and then gap of, let's do this like 3 rem, something like that. Background color here will be our var uh, background. And we'll do padding of 2 rem and border radius uh, of 2 rem as well. All right, so if I do that, you can see over here, this background color is actually picked up. So I just have this kind of squiggly stuff, not <laughs> behind the text, which is good. All right, now this is a little bit heavy for me on this H2. So let's say content uh, H2 like that. Let's set the font size a little bit bigger. So we'll say something like uh, 3.2 rem, something like that. And then we'll do a line height here and we'll just do one. So we want it to be real tight, maybe 1.1, something like that. All right, I think I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and I wanna add a class to this SVG. Uh, let's see, up top here. So let's call this shirt. That way we can access it in the CSS. So I'll come down here and grab my shirt. And here what I wanna do is I wanna set the color to my var of shirt. All right, now what is this? Well, let's kind of make a custom variable inside of here. So we'll say shirt is HSL. And we want var of my hue so that as I change my hue, it'll change the shirt color. But I want to create kind of a custom setting just for the shirt. So we'll do 60% on the saturation and 50% on the lightness. All right, now this is just going to work its way down here. You can see it picked up the hue from the, the root variables, but then it set its own color based off that. All right, we've got just a couple more things to do here. Let's also grab the text container. And we'll do display grid with a gap of like point. Uh, six rem, something like that. Space out the text just a little bit. And then below that, we've got a button container. And here we'll do display uh, flex. And I'll do a gap of two rem. All right, now let's actually work on the buttons so that they display how we want them to. So we'll say button here. Let's set just a fixed height and width. So we'll do something like, I don't know, 60 pixels. And then we'll do height as the same. Let's set a border radius here of 100 V max to make sure it's always a circle, kind of no matter what. We've got some items we obviously need to work on still in the major styling, but let's say border here is gonna be uh, none. And now I actually wanna set the background color to something very similar to that shirt. So what I'm gonna do is say background color here, and whereas you can declare like a local variable here, the another way to do this is just to go ahead and 
grab it directly like this, not establish a local variable. And if we're only updating the hue, that should work the same way. So that's kind of two ways of using variables. Uh, one, you can have a little bit more control over how this works, assuming that you want to sh uh, switch around how this shirt is. Uh, down here, what we're going to do is just update the hue. And either way will work in this scenario. I've just shown you two different ways to do it. All right, so that means to start with right now, obviously they are all blue. That's all right, we'll fix that here in a second. I wanna set a transition here. We'll do box shadow and let's do like 500 milliseconds, something like that. We'll do a cubic Bezier curve and sure, let's pick this first one. And finally, let's set the cursor here to pointer so that when I come over here, I can actually get a little cursor indicating that I can click. Now next, I wanna remove the default outline on the focus state. So I'll grab my outline and set it to none. And then let's go ahead and copy this down and I'm gonna update one more thing and that would be, I'll grab an is selector to grab both the hover and the focus visible states. So focus visible is when you tab to something. So either hovering or focusing on it uh, with your tab key should do the same thing. And that is what I wanna do is take the box shadow here and I wanna set this to zero, zero, zero. So it's not gonna be moving left or right or up or down and it has no blur to it. So all it's gonna have is like a fixed hard color here. We're gonna set this to our var of background. Then I'm gonna add a second one here. We'll copy all of this and do something very similar. I'll come down here just to make it a little easier to read. And here what I want to do is do the same thing I did for my button. So set this custom hue variable just for this box shadow. Now in this case, I do wanna change this out too to 12 pixels. And if I save that and I come over here, you should see something happen, all right? Oh, and I don't hear it because I did not close that out. All right, there we go. All right, so you see how they kind of pop up like that. Okay, that leaves one final thing, and that is to set these as custom colors. Now, because we've been using this hue variable all throughout, both on the button and then on the hover and focus and visible states, what I can do is just grab my data color property and I can grab them individually. So in this case, I can grab like 90 like this. And then all I'm gonna do is come inside here and, and reset the hue to whatever that is. So in this case, it would be 90. And you can see that that updates not only here, but even when I hover now, this also updates because we're using the CSS variable of hue all throughout. So I'm gonna copy this down a few more times and we'll update this one at a time. Now eventually, I'd love it to be able to use like the attribute um, function and actually grab this in CSS. I don't even know if that's planned to be in the spec, but right now you can pretty much only use it uh, for like uh, content for before and after pseudo elements. But it'd be great to be able to just say data color ATTR, you know, whatever, <laughs> grab it and set it right here uh, as the content. All right, so we seem to have fixed our problems. Let me pull this out and just make sure that it's all working properly. We have some overflow going on here. Maybe it's this SVG t-shirt. Let's go ahead and set a size on that as well, I think. So if I come back up top here, uh, let's set a size. Uh, where we go? Let's go width here of like 320. We don't even probably need it that big, maybe 300, something like that. Uh, so that should work. And then maybe we should also set that uh, here. So we could say like SVG, max width of 100%. I'm guessing that's what's overflowing. No? Oh, you know what? I was zoomed in. All right. All right. So I think that's set now. Um, we can get as small as we need to. Maybe I want to make that a little bit bigger then uh, so that it doesn't wrap the one letter. All right. So yeah, that works. All right. I was just zoomed in. So let's come back uh, over here and maybe change up the width that th this thing's allowed to be to like 35 characters, something like that. And that way, not quite. Maybe let's reduce this just a touch. How about to three run? All right, just trying to make it look, uh, look just like that. All right, now what we wanna do is figure out how to actually update this with JavaScript. And it's actually not that difficult because of the way we've built this all out. We can use those data attributes to just update the one hue variable. And not only will it update the t-shirt, but the hues all throughout the site will pick up that same kind of color pattern. So once again, just to kind of keep everything in the same file, let's go ahead and just write this in line. And uh, let's see, let's just do it right here. So I'll say script. And here I really just need to grab my buttons. So we'll say const uh, buttons like this, document.query selector all, and I'm gonna select anything with the button tag. Now, obviously I wouldn't do this in production site. I put some kind of class on it, but I think this works for now. Then what we're gonna do is loop over those buttons. So buttons dot for each. For each button here, I wanna do a button dot add event listener. And the event I'm listening for is a click. And then let's make this an arrow function. And what I wanna do is grab the color now, when I click that, all I want to do is update the hue variable for the entire site. So what I would do is just say document dot document element, which is the same thing as selecting the root or the HTML dot style dot set property. And the property I want to set is my hue like that. What do I want to set it to? Well, I want to set it to my button dot get attribute 
or you could do it a couple different ways. I guess you could do data set dot color that works as well or get attribute and then select data dash color that works as well. Now I'm noticing a problem before I even run this and that is that this is B not button. Uh, it's whatever I passed in up here and that's how I passed it in. So if I click here, this should update everything and it does. All right, pretty cool. Now with all the t-shirt sites in my area, I'm sure that none of them have something like this. And so I figured this would be a fun little thing to add and it helps my clients stand out just a touch. We got a chance to play around with a lot of interesting things here. We got these cool box shadow effects on the buttons. We got to actually work with CSS variables in a couple different ways. Uh, we got to embed SVGs in backgrounds, actually update the SVG because it's embedded in the page using current color. I hope all of this was a big help to you. Hey, well, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.